Hi everyone, welcome to this new Express Flute Tips video. Today I'm going to speak again about the singing in the flute, and this is the second chapter. In the first one, we were seeing what is the way that our predisposition, our body placement, can affect the basic singing in the instrument. So, if we find these natural resonators, these natural resonances, more you know, so that then we have this or if it's more closed, then it's difficult because it's... Okay, it happens because, of course, we are using our resonance, but also it happens because it affects the way how we are placing the embouchure. That's basically what it's the effect. That's why it sounded with more space in the first version and with less in the second, because the first one is more... There's more space in the embouchure and the second one is more... It's more tight. Okay, it's not that one is better than the other, it's just different kind of sound. So, there is, I think there is a very natural kind of connection in the way we try to sing and the way we play the flute. But it's not the same. I mean, the technique when we sing, we produce a sound here, and with the flute we produce a sound here. That can sound very obvious, but it's not so obvious sometimes, because some, there is sometimes this image that we need to like sing with the flute, like, hey, sing, and that's easily then, it's very easy. And in fact, it's not like this, uh, it's not that easy because we have to translate the, the imagination and the creativity we can have when we sing into flute technique. And sometimes that's, it's, not, it's not that easy. There are some things that are kind of tricky with the flute, you know? It's not this natural, let's say, resonance or this natural um, articulation. Sometimes we have to work a lot. I'm going to give some examples about a very using a very vocal piece, which is these variations, Schubert variations about the Trogne Blumen for flute and piano. The first thing I have to say is that for me it's very important to use voice as a tool, as a tool to imaginate, as a tool to analyze also the piece and in order to find the phrasings and the intentions and the musical sound, colors in the sound that we want we want to find. And for this kind of work it's even the flute is not needed, so we can just have the score, the piano flute score in that case, or if it's a concerto, the full score, and then really, really look at the music. It's something that sometimes I think we should st all stop and, and do, because then our interpretations will be basically like more deep, also to know about the context of the piece, also to know about the biography of the composer, the harmonies, the, all of this, I think it's very important. And in order to do this job, it's not needed to have the flute there and to be playing first. It's needed to have first an approach, to have some proposals, and then try out those proposals into the flute. So translate them into flute technique. That's what I'm going to do now. Maybe the video is a little bit more long than usual, but I think it's quite important topic. And I would like to share with all of you my personal approach on that, because it's how I practice basically when I'm practice, practicing phrasing, because sometimes I think that the phrasing is not something that comes just from the intuition. <laughs> I mean, it should, and it's a great when in a concert we have this inspiration and we play and we improvise. That's part of the music. Music is alive, of course. But somehow we have an idea before, we have a concept. For instance, going to the concrete things. At the beginning, in the, um, the first opening uh, phrase, I have a proposal, basically, which is for letting the finding a, a sonority that leads the piano be very clear in this rhythm, this this kind of marcha funebre somehow um, character, or it reminds me a lot this kind of uh, the, the second movement of the Beethoven Seventh Symphony some, somehow. But we have to need, we need to, to find, I think, a sound that is not invasive. So, of course, it's pianissimo, but even if it's pianissimo, I will not play With this kind of sonority, because it's already too present. Even if I have to think to sing, I will go like. We'll try to have this more mysterious sound, more with much more warmth. This, I think, it needs to be concreted into the flute with not using so much pressure in the lips, using a very warm air, very round embouchure but very focused as well, but with no tension, so...
this and then also i think it's important now i can even do better to have change late little change of color in the last e because it's e major and light comes here it's not expected because piece starts in i mean it starts in minor obviously our first entrance it's e minor but then it's dominant and it changed the, radically the, the color so if we know that we need to maybe change it a little bit but very slightly with the color so more light in that so Of course, relaxing as a phrase at the end of the phrase, but I don't know. These kind of details are important for me. And when if I play now with, with the piano, we will find that. We will find this balance. Because in order what the pianist plays with me, unfortunately there is no one with me now playing the piano, I will love, but it we will find that. Because maybe with the piano it changes radically and I will have to use a different balance, different type of sound, maybe more air, maybe a little bit more pressure or not. I don't know, maybe we could find a very special piano and then I could find this more whispering sound, more... Even more, less pressure still, more quantity of air, but more... Maybe, why not? Could be beautiful, but we, have, we should work on that as an ensemble as well, no? Okay, that was one example. Then we can go to the main theme, no? Which for me it's clear that it's a lead, it's 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 a song for, for a singer, and we should try to have all these little nuances, all these little details. So for me it's one will not sing this I think it's it's not it's not it's not ugly, I mean it's it could be, but I think it has more details inside. It's more it's more It has this M, the magic M's in the end, these resonances. Okay, unfortunately that it's very difficult with the flute, I have to say. It, um, at least for me it's difficult. But I try to translate this imagination, this team, into flute technique. And then I, we have to do a lot of things, because it's first it's a focus sound, then we do a very very fast diminuendo, but with resonance that doesn't stop to the next note. Then we go, then if we have the tim, tim, goes back a little bit with natural resonance, but not cutting also the phrase, so it's not sectioned. I mean, spoken like this, it can be difficult. When we sing, I think it's more natural. So, tim, 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 tim. when we have this in mind, then we can try and practice in order to, to translate that into flute song. <laughs> Difficult for me, it's the resonances, the... Then continuing, and then the... To have this gesture also. Etc. So even I would work in order to have a much more comfortable feeling, much more much more floating feeling, not not being so focused in these little things but integrating them. No, like This I find very, very, very interesting to practice. This kind of resonances. I, I really recommend that you use your imagination in order to find these details, because then we have much more range of, of expressivity and musicality. And then, to end, last but not least, we have this beautiful variation. 
this very warm variation major, this Okay, here I think it's quite easy when we all sing, we go, we'll go like as I just played, but then comes again and with the flute sometimes when we see the articulation we go I think it's different kind of articulation, it's more so we can, we, again, we have to use the resonance in the that I was doing before in the top, in the top B, but now here. Here it's a little bit more easy. Thanks. Also, I am also the same. No, of course, and the changes. These changes we do with the throat when we sing we can we have to really do very specific with the flute and to prepare a lot the register change. Here also, no? Okay, that's clear, no? But then when we continue this very beautiful espressivo, this appoggiatura is very espressivo, and then it goes on. It would be nice to have also this very natural feeling that we can have when we sing in, in, the, in the flute. And for this again, we need a lot of details. So, sonority first. And then again, no? So, in order to, to find this, we should practice on that, not only on the fingers. Of course, this piece has a lot of virtuosity, but also this is very important, I think. So, I hope that this a little bit more, a little bit not quite radically long video can help you. It's, those were just examples. I mean, I just chose a um, very vocal piece that it's like very clear. These details are like very clear and have a lot of importance and if they are not played, not like this, they, everyone have different versions. But I think that it's a little bit a pity when these details are not there because then there is some deepened part of the music, which is in that case the vocal part, that is not there. And for me that's a little bit what I think about singing in the flute, really. It's not just singing, but translating into my instrument. So I hope that that was interesting, that, was not, that it was not so long, and that you can use this approach in your regular practice with a lot of different pieces. So thanks for, for watching, and see you in the next chapter. Ciao.